First and foremost, thank you very much, Sandeep and the team, for inviting me for this occasion. We have been friends for almost eight, nine years now. We've been discussing, and this is the first time that I have visited Daniel Sanjeev's show. And I'm very proud of the things that I have seen, and the collaboration, and the networking that we have created. So it's an amazing product. Congratulations on that, Sandeep. So, Sri Lanka and India, uh, the trade relationship to many other relationships that we have been carrying out throughout years. So, I thought this is an opportunity that as a Sri Lankan, as a Sri Lankan brand ambassador to come to India and talk about what went through and how we are coming up with our new solutions and resolutions as well as how well that we can collaborate to do business in future. So, first I would like to take your through uh, a present uh, video uh, sponsored by the Sri Lanka Tourism on how the recovery phase is taking place. There was a time when instability and turbulence loomed over our beloved Sri Lanka. An uncertainty was in the air, plagued by a pandemic and an economic crisis consecutively. We as a people withstood tremendous hardships with an imminent need for perseverance and a solution. But that was then. Here we are now amidst the smiles we made of you. Amidst the wonders not forgotten, we nurtured a haven for us and you to live and work remotely, to elevate your experiences, to find an inner peace, to celebrate independence, both ours and of your own to get lost in our nightlife, to make the moments last. In safety we've created, in safety we've made fast. Hotels on hills and beaches, a trek on roads sun-kissed, where fireworks meet culture, and culture feels like bliss. Ever onward, ever blessed, we're a standard always set. We're an island so amazing that some call it the best. An island bathed in forests. An island bathed in mist. An island bathed in coral reefs. An island loved and missed. Wherever you choose to go, wherever you choose to be, it's a short drive in any direction to excursions and opportunity. Here's where hundreds of thousands of new smiles grace malls and businesses alike. Here's where power now flows consistently and resource supplies have height. Here's where dedication and renewed leadership work together to keep the heart of a nation beating. Here's where safety measures are taken. So, no more masks. You can enjoy breathing. Make a trip and make haste. There isn't a moment to waste. Your adventure begins when you decide. I think I love this place. Okay. So on the topic of resilience, when Sandeep asked me what you would like to discuss about being resilient, it's born with us, basically. So, if you really look at the total disasters that we have gone through as a country, so taking from the top, so we had a civil war, all of you are aware of it, right? For 26 years, we had a civil war in our country. So, close to 150,000 people died of certain people's stupidity, I would say. So, we suffered till 2009. While that the civil war is on, then we had the biggest tsunami in Southeast Asia. In 2004, we lost uh, closer to uh, 35,000 people died because of the tsunami. Also, there was a lot of uh, destruction for tourism at that point too. Then, gradually, we started rebuilding the nation little by little. Then, we had 21st of April 2019. Again, there was another disaster in Sri Lanka. The Easter bombing happened. So, this was in the media. You guys are aware of it. 
So again, it was a setback for the country. And why we were trying to promote tourism at a bigger scale, and we were trying to do trade shows worldwide, we were again, we have to take a step back and see how we could generate more tourism. While that was happening, then we came out with another, we had to face another issue, we all faced worldwide, that was the pandemic, COVID, in 2020-2021. So, as an industry, as a country, we went into three major lockdowns. So, almost six months of productive working culture was not there. So, we had to suffer through that too. Then we were overcoming, we overcame the pandemic in a different way. We had our health regulations properly done our, and our uh, pandemic uh, protocols were set up nicely. Then while we were trying to pick up again, then this happened. An unprecedented economic crisis in 2022. So this was one of the major shocks, guys. Because we have been a nation, always we have been coming through disaster to disaster, but we overcame with our resilient factor bond with us. But unfortunately, when this hit us, we had to face a lot of issues. Last year, it's not far away, 365 days ago. So, we didn't have foreign currency. We had to completely stop imports. We didn't have dollars. So, that created a huge impact on purchasing fuel to medicine to all the other uh, commodities to Sri Lanka, importation was stopped. We didn't have any other way. We had to depend on some kind of a bailout package or we have to self, be self-sufficient to overcome this. But from the start of poor, when we didn't have, so this was a real situation where irrespective of what social economic class you belong to in Sri Lanka, whether you are a sick K, sick B, sick C, still all of us were in this kind of queues not only for days, not only for hours, for weeks sometimes. But as Sri Lankans, as an island nation, we always take certain opportunities out of it. The happily married guys who wanted to stay out of home for three, four days, so that was an excuse for us because we are in the pool queue. So we call our friends and we say, okay, bro, I'm in this pool queue, why don't you join me? So we used to entertain ourselves for four days, nothing else we could do because we couldn't travel. So at, in, in my case, I had a factory which was 20, 20 kilometers away from where I live. So there is no fuel, irrespective of what kind of a vehicle you drive. So there is no fuel, you have to either walk or ride. So I chose the option of riding my bicycle. So that was an exercise for me. That's how we started little by little overcoming the challenges. So why I say these kind of things? Because as a nation, I don't wish any other nation to go through this kind of disaster continuously. Think about it guys, in India you guys are blessed, right? So we, we always, and look, we are, if you compare the numbers, we are 70 times smaller to you. We are in total 22 million people only. In December when I was talking to PIKI officials in Delhi, myself and my friend who is here, Ravi Vikramanayaka, we both predicted, trust me, your numbers are wrong. You guys are going to be the largest population in the world. And now it has been proven by the US statistics, if I am not mistaken, India is the largest population in the world. You guys have been so busy guys, keep pushing. I wish uh, you guys become the uh, 2 billion population very soon, right? So because it's all about numbers, right, end of the day. So in our case, due to all these shortages, if you really look at it, even we didn't have LPG gas, people used to stand in queues for weeks. So there is no way to feed your children. Then. We had power outage for 12 to 10 to 12 hours daily. We had power cuts. So this, this we have never gone through. So as industry, especially when it comes to production oriented industry in Sri Lanka, even the exporters who have been rep representing close to 5 billion USD turnover to the local garment manufacturing industry, which I represent, which is almost 2 billion dollar industry. We all have to go through a lot of hassle to run our operation. So these were the challenges that we were faced with and uh, especially the medicine, we didn't have the medical supply. So various nations came out and started helping us. We are, we are really grateful to the nations who really supported. In that case, the main factor was India, right? So we are really owe you guys a lot, the Indian government to the public of India for really caring for the brotherhood of Sri Lanka, honestly. 
because if you really look at it, the current president and your prime minister, the discussions that took place last year, within a short period of time, the bailout package India sent, the medicine India sent, and the support India extended for us to be recommended for the IMF bailout package was a tremendous success for us. So, in trade relations, in return, now uh, your foreign minister was there twice within this six months time, and we, you guys have been guiding Sri Lanka, working collaboratively with Sri Lanka, and at some point we feel we are the next state of Sri India, sometimes we feel like that, right? But still, as a, as a country, we are always proud and we are always blessed to have India as our neighbor. And the biggest turning point when it comes to the trading of Sri Lanka and Indian relationship, there is going to be a FTA signed very soon for Indian, with the Indian government and Sri Lankan finance ministry. And also, there is a Vostro account. Already the Vostro transactions are happening. That even though that we don't have dollar, we don't have dollar rich, we are not dollar rich, still Indian government started a Vostro account concept with Sri Lankan banks. So basically, as Sri Lankans, if we want to buy fabric or send goods or whatever, we can just pay in Sri Lankan rupees and you will receive it from your Indian bank as INR. So that kind of arrangement has been made already by the Indian government. So the bottleneck that we had in the USD, I'm sure India is working with many other countries in the similar manner, I think Russia to various other countries. So for Sri Lanka it was a great blessing. So that's how we started little by little picking up with our industry. So there is history right now because I always like storytelling because I, I have been listening to all the products to technical aspects of it. So sometimes it's very good to listen to stories also. Because if Disney can with a mouse can create so many billion dollar business, of course you can tolerate listening to me for five minutes at least, right? So so you see, we are just about 32 kilometers or so on nautical miles, right? We are the most closest nation for you all. So we, we consider ourselves as a uh, Buddhist nation, right? So Lord Buddha was born in India, right? And we basically practice the best philosophy in our country. Then we have an interesting another story. You remember Ramayana, right? So I always take this example. So at some point, Ravana decides to kidnap Sita from your country. And Ravana was the first person to invent some flying machine, I would say, right? So it was not the Wright brothers. It was Ravana at that time. So when this happened, then we call it, then Rama decides to take his troops with Hanuma to Sri Lanka. Then they build a bridge. That's how the relationship started. And there was a story, these are some significant stories guys. Uh, when Hanuma, the soldiers were wounded, when Hanuma wanted to treat them with uh, uh, healing her, so he had to go to Himalaya. And since that he was not happy with what he could found, find, so he basically carried a mountain. So the, the real aspect of it, in Rumasala, there is a place called Gaul, there is a real small mountain in Rumasala, as well as there is another mountain range in Kitulgala in Sri Lanka, where you can find all the Ayurvedic herbs and stuff, which is unique to Himalaya and next to Sri Lanka. So there is some kind of story, some kind of link that which has been created at that time. And also, when I was discussing with Piki, now we realize there is a train from north to Rameswara, where this Ramayana, the thing, the people go on pilgrimage, to go up to Rameswara. So we invited that, uh, we told Fiki also, why don't you bring the same people to Sri Lanka, we'll show you where Sita was kept. We are very respectable people, we treated her very well. So, and we can, <laughs> so, uh, and uh, we can show you that also. And Sri, Sri Lanka tourism is so cheap comparatively. I was just telling my friends here. Now, there are a lot of attraction points for Indians to travel for $1,000, $1,200, hotel rooms today. I don't want to mention the countries. It will become a controversy because one of my tourism ministers made a statement. It became a controversy. I don't want to be like that. So, but we can give you seven star luxury for 300 to 400 dollars and we can give you variety, right? It's not only the beach. So, my friend who had worked there for, stayed there for six years, he, he will vouch for it, right? We can give you variety, the beach, the wildlife, the heritage, you name it, we have it. Every 40 kilometer, you see a climatic change. That is why we call ourselves as a tropical country. Right? So we are rich with so many and we basically fail with certain fiscal policies with our country and political decisions. That's what I feel we change. And the most interesting aspect is negative is cricket. Think about it. So huge for you guys, right? Now in 1996, thanks to you all, because you all boycotted the match at Kolkata, you remember? Because we know Kamli and Kamli, uh, Kumble was batting and you were supposed to score a lot of runs. 
and uh, Kolkata started acting violently and we were through to the finals and we won the World Cup. It's in 1996. And we were very generous people, you know. In 2011, you beat us badly and you won the World Cup under Dhoni's captaincy. In 2014, we came back and we won the T20 World Cup. Then Asia, okay, little bit of uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, cricket, I'm a cricket fan anyway. So, we, we, we consider ourselves Asian champions at the moment. But think about IPL today, right? Trust me, MSD is a big brand in Sri Lanka. And MSD, and till recent, Chennai Super Kings was the, not the most popular team in Sri Lanka. It was Mumbai Indians and, King, uh, and it was RCB. Now today, things have changed. Because of the nature of MSD, and what the way that he is nurturing these two kids, the bowlers, the batting, the bowling attack today for CSK is pulled by two Sri Lankan bowlers. And today, everywhere in Colombo, if you really look at the matches, it's all whistle port, right? So MSD can be a great brand ambassador for Sri Lankan tourism also. That's what I feel. But we don't like Virat Kohli. I would have to be very honest to you because you know why? It's a very technical thing. Because whenever Virat is out of form, your board of control decides to send the entire team to Sri Lanka. And when he comes to Sri Lanka, he starts performing again. And he starts scoring runs. So because of that, we don't like Virat Kohli, King Kohli. But we love him as a cricketer. But we don't like him when he plays against our country. So our relationship, cricket to history, to the religion, to everything, Sri Lanka and India has been fantastic. Right? So, where are we now? Let's get into the technical aspects of it. So Sri Lanka's journey of recovery just started. We just signed up with the bailout package from IMF and with the blessings of so many countries, debt restructuring is happening. And we, has, we contracted a 7.8% in uh, 2022. We will be contracting a minus in 2023 too. And from 2024, we are in the path. We, our fiscal policies are right and we have drafted our roadmap till 2030. Sri Lanka is in a journey, in a faster recovery journey than expected. Trust me because a lot of people thought Sri Lanka is going to be another Libya. Sri Lanka is not going to be another, uh, they compare to various other places. In fact, we got scared. But one thing kept us going that we know after so much of disasters and so much of challenges that we faced in our life, as Sri Lankans we never give up. We will somehow find a way and we will somehow try to push our country forward. Is that what we are made of? So we thought we will definitely can do it with the current leadership and with the structures and with external support, I'm sure we will be another prominent nation in another five years' time. The journey is a little far, but still, that five years is going to be there. So, this is directly from the Board of Investment Statistics. So, our inflation, if you really look at it, in September 2022, before we had all these issues, we had 73.7% inflation. Then it gradually started dropping. And now, it's still, the inflation rate is at 50%, but we feel, this will change very fast. Also, we have an unemployment rate of 5% and the per, per capita income has reduced. But still, as a nation which had a minus 7.8 to this is something that we really we are proud of, of how we are recovering at the moment. So, some of my friends uh, who met me today were asking, okay, what kind of investment opportunities Sri Lanka is offering for uh, textile, basically. So, overall, as as a country, as BOI, Sri Lanka has structured a lot of new initiatives. We did have a lot of red tapes, guys. Some of you would have come to Sri Lanka for investments. We had red tapes, but we have changed it into a red carpet scenario at the moment. Because for people to realize where you are and what you are capable of, and you have to go through certain disasters, then only you realize how important you are in the global shape and how important you are positioned in the geopolitical arena too. So, we as a nation, we have structured a lot of differences. So the investment climate, if you really want to know, we are offering 100% foreign ownership now. Right? So also we have the repatriation of profits 100%. So these are the new policy reforms that we have taken into place as a country. So we, we have given uh, the foreign investments are guaranteed by the constitution, by constitution, by law, the foreign investment is guaranteed. Likewise, we have many other areas which we have uh, brainstorm, decided, and we are moving forward with. So, 
if you really look at the BOE partnership, now for the past 40 years, BOE been, Board of Investment has been pushing. Now recently, after all these disasters, still we have received 2.8 billion worth of FDI applications, which is in the process. And uh, our national exports to the national apparel export technically is growing, even with all these disasters. Right? So we will be pushing for a 6.5 billion dollar trade on apparel only this year. That is our target from the Joint Apparel Association Forum. And I don't represent the export aspect of it, but I do. I can talk about it. I can represent that here. In the meantime, we have a local industry which is at valued at $2 billion, which is we are pushing to with a growth, with expansion, with going into other countries, especially India. So that is our main focus. So we are expecting to grow it up to $3 billion. So this is our plan. With God's blessings, we should be there. So why Sri Lanka? If you really look at it, most of you know about Sri Lanka. So the location advantage, when trading with India and Sri Lanka is very easy. As well as our talent and education, we have a highly skilled resource pool. Comparatively, like I said earlier, we are 70 times smaller than you. So don't compare with your statistics. But of course, we have a very high resource skill. Our IT industry is good. But recently, we had a major challenge of brain drain, where people wanted to leave the country. They don't want to stay in the country. But still now things are changing. Some of the people who are left are coming back because they, they feel that's always better to be in the country that you are born and to give you a service, at least to the country. So if you really look at the market aspect, as, uh, access aspects of it, we have a GSP of uh, access over 450 million. And also we have free trade agreements with certain countries. And with India, we have a regional trade agreement that's called the SAPTA of 1.7 billion. Technically, and also we have an 8 million pieces free quota. Basically, finished good garments can be exported to India on a tax-free basis. So this 8 million, now we have requested the Indian Embassy of Colombo as well as the Chamber of Commerce and the government of Sri Lanka is requesting that to be increased at least by another 50%. At least if we can have 12 million pieces a tax-free quota, then of course Sri Lankan brands also can enjoy the luxury of being in India. So yesterday I was listening to Nidhi and how Indian brands are structured and how you want to develop the Indian market. In the meantime, we do have our own uh, wedding call strengths. So in my next slides, I will explain it to you. So the priority sectors to drive FDIs is manufacturing especially. These are the areas that we have focused as a country. So pharmaceutical, electronics, media devices, apparel, rubber, to so these industries are considered as priority sectors and also renewable energy into the infrastructure, logistics centers, and mixed development, integrated hazard waste, hospitals, are also investment opportunities. And there are already closer to 150, uh, sorry, 1,500 MNCs which are operating from Sri Lanka. There are various Indian IT companies who have also their business to Sri Lanka. And now we are in increasing the resource pool with our educational system and private institutes also. So these are the opportunities for investment. So on priority sector of apparel, I took some data from BOI directly. So BOI is considered custom duty free export oriented. So there are few slabs. So the earlier slab of 150 million is completely reduced. Now under section 16, you can start with the US, US dollar 250,000 investment with Sri Lanka and start enjoying tax benefits also. So um, especially on this uh, corporate income tax. So we, we are allowing 5 year to 10 year tax benefits depending on the investment that you are going to make and what kind of a, a textile infrastructure that you want to create. We have created a separate textile park in Eraur. That's a huge landscape. And also in Hambantota port as well as in Kalambu port. Already you know that Adani group of India is having a stronghold in Kalambu port. And now Adani group is building some renewable energy in Manar also. So a lot of investments happening in Sri Lanka through India. So I'm glad that when I spoke to a few of, uh, friends who are here, they were also willing to come to Sri Lanka. So I'm very glad about it. Please talk to me when I'm, I will be around today till the evening. So if you have any questions, you can directly ask me. Then we can discuss further on this. Okay, so main concept of it. If you are really trying to work with Sri Lanka and textile industry or whatever, the areas, the people whom you should contact. Now like some of my friends said that we met the ambassador, we met the... Uh, various other people, please consider you have a clear, clear, clear relationship with the Export Development Board 
or the BAO or Board of Investment of Sri Lanka. If not, it's the Ministry of Industry and Commerce and Government in Sri Lanka. So, uh, some of our members are board members of ADB as well as board members of BOI, uh, I mean the association that I represent as LABA. And I, I'm, I'm personally, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Textile Advisory Committee with the Ministry of Industries. And this is the big boys, Joint Apparel Association, they are the exporters. So this industry started 40 years ago in Sri Lanka and we have been glorified tailors to the world and we have we had always had the reputation of quality garment manufacturers. So we have been pushing forward. In fact, even in Bangladesh, Sri Lankan industries are the first to go and invest in Bangladesh and you know how big Bangladesh is today. So our technology to human resource we still provide it to other countries also. So I think we are really good at garment manufacturing. So that's one side of the coin. So, where I represent as the President for Sri Lanka Apparel Association, these are the domestic brands in Sri Lanka. This is the complete vertical. So, if you take the export oriented business, sometimes you don't go up to the design aspect of it. You only do the tailoring aspect of it. You only do the manufacturing aspect of it. But when it comes to the apparel brands in Sri Lanka, it is the complete vertical. From design to the development to the production to the selling. So, 10% of our member body had already started exporting to various parts of the world. But our vision, we wanted to expand this and especially in India we wanted to have trade shows, we wanted to have delegations from India to come in and we want to have a joint venture partnership with Indian brands if you really look at it and Indian retailers with online retailers. So we wanted to bring in Sri Lankan brands because by physique, by looks or whatever the fits doesn't change with Sri Lankan India. We look the same, right? So we look the same because you guys have invaded us more than the uh, English I believe, right? So <laughs> <laughs> and you are welcome to do that in the future too, that's okay, right? So, I think by fit, we, we, the clothing aspect of it, by taste, we are the same. But Sri Lanka has a little bit of a formal aspect of it. Now, India had become a little bit of semi-formal casual, but Sri Lanka still have that heritage of formals too. So, most of our brands, they have the complete vertical of handling all these product lines. So, we are willing to come into Indian market and we would like to explore the Indian market. Very challenging, but we also would like to be there. So, as the Apparel Brands Association, we, have, we established long ago, uh, 14 years ago, in order to have a unity among the brands, in order to have brands focusing on international markets, in order to have the Be Sri Lankan, Buy Sri Lankan, because you will always see, I know the Indians, Indians to everyone are patriotic, but if you, when it comes to Sri Lanka, if you really look at it, only 6 to 7 percent of the population, affluent maybe, in the meantime, would like to prefer buying international brands. But most of the Sri Lankans love to wear their own brands. So, so the Be Sri Lankan and Buy Sri Lankan movement has always been there. So I think that's a little bit of a patriotism coming into us. But still, saying that, Sri Lankans are fashionable. We wear good clothes. We love our quality. So in the meantime, we are in discussion with the Indian government and we would like to have some kind of a uh, FTA signed, bi bilateral FTAs both ends in order to bring Sri Lankan brands also to Indian market. So, post pandemic, now, just before the financial crisis, we defined as an association, we had a post, after post pandemic, we had a lot of things to structure. Because we didn't, we didn't want to lose the game, we didn't want to lose the battle. So, we have been pushing the governments from that end. So, with new policies, with the local mindset, and increasing the e-commerce platform, and introducing new apparel technology, if you really look at the big big giants in Sri Lanka like the MAS group, the Brandix group, the Hydromanis. So if you really look at it, they have the best technology right in apparel manufacturing. So we all work together at least for the world and the global side of it as well as each and every brand has its own local brand also. So there is a lot of technology happening. And if you really look at most of the brand owners who I represent, including myself, I have worked for uh, many brands in Sri Lanka. So we have learned the ABCs right. So we became entrepreneurs because of we learned the things right and we know how exactly how the technology works and the market works. So we have a manifesto in our head. So what we want to do is as a local industry we wanted to create more jobs because we had the 660 billion Sri Lankan rupee market and we wanted to boost, connect the tourism towards our infrastructure and we want to keep our factories in a very minimal compliance oriented state because if it is producing for local we don't have to worry about more compliance oriented aspects. 
So we have structured a small model with the, we are working with the Indus Ministry of Industries, a 25 member factory model. This is village to village, where you really enhance the quality of life of people. You guys really know how strenuous it's in, uh, if you are working in a garment factory and if you are a machine operator, if you are working for international brands, the timelines, the deadlines that you have to meet, the shipment delays will cost you. So you really push your workers, right? So we have created a culture for the local industry where uh, people can work freely because if they are working in the village in a small factory, they can just walk to the factory. They don't have to take transportation which is going to cost them two hours per day. So we have created that happy working environment for our people. So we encourage people to work in the local garment factories where it's much easier for them. For example, the daily benefits of at least taking care of the kids' school to the food, everything is a very more happy life culture. So this is our portfolio, this is what we have been driving for. And also, <laughs> we, we are coming out with a concept, we are still in the discussion phase. We would like to like the London, Paris, New York, we would like to have Sri Lankan Fashion Week. That is one big investment that we want to do. Where then that will be another fashion destination because you know we can give a versatile variety of uh, tourism along with fashion and that is one thing that we will be discussing. Definitely Sandeep, you and your team will be part of it for sure. So we will work together and we will see how we can push this together because it is not going to be only for Sri Lankan brands. It is going to be the global brands, especially the Asian brands. The Indian brands can benefit out of it and we will create infrastructure where we have Port City in Kalambo which is a bigger investment which is coming in. So that's a beautiful area. So we wanted to push a lot of investment coming in there and with a little bit of fashion too. So this movement domestic, we have taken three years ago, we started this strengthening the domestic brands. I think we have done a good job there. And now it's time that we wanted to venture out and see the world too. So another concept that we are promoting, like in, Patu, uh, in Thailand, like in Singapore, the wholesale market concept of it, because as domestic brands, we didn't have a proper place to showcase our collections to tourists. So now we are working with the government, we are, we are trying to implement a wholesale market concept, which is closer to the Patanayak airport, which we are in the process of acquiring a land for that. And we want to put up a wholesale market concept where you can come and buy in bulk if you really want to. So these are work in progress. I just wanted to enlighten you all. So these things will happen within a couple of years. So this, this I mentioned to you, introducing 25 machine factory model, boosting the domestic apparel sector and creating a happy life environment for workers and also to boost the regional economies. We are a very small country but scattered with 9 provinces, 25 districts. So we have a different central, uh, centralized as well as decentralized political system also and administrative system. So each and every division from the small aspect of it, from the village, we wanted to have some kind of an apparel factory which is owned by a local entrepreneur, funded by the state banks which supports them with a long term loan scheme. So we just wanted to make them have the access to the world. So made in Sri Lanka movement is one thing that we have created. So I think that is working very well and as I mentioned the Sri Lankan fashion week aspect is also there. So hopefully, we will be in a position to definitely capture the audience. So as SLABA, as an association, we provide a lot of support to the local manufacturers, small scale factories, SMEs. So we give technical support, we, we allow them financial support, basically we coordinate with the brands and we coordinate with the banks and the ministries and the financial institutions to get them soft loans. So we are increasing a little by, we are pushing a little by little to increase the capacity. So I think by 2025 we will have the capacity doubled for the local garment manufacturing production. So these are the gains that Sri Lanka will benefit from the Sri Lava Manifesto. We will create 450,000 jobs as expected and we would like to increase the tourism based on that. And we would, be, we would like to be a fashion and lifestyle hub because we are a small country, we can definitely do that. And we want to take national brands globally. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. So, that's all from me and it's a very small presentation but uh, end of the day I just wanted to give some clarity because last year we were declared as a bankrupt country and now here we are talking positively and making a way forward and we would like to build this country together with all your support. I'll be around. If you have any ideas, please let me know. We are open for discussion. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Istan. Such a nice presentation. Uh, uh, Nick, I was actually I wanted to ask a question before others ask. Uh, one is, uh, let's say, if, uh, last year, of course, there was such a bad time. I just wanted to ask how how the um, apparel exports were affected in terms of you know how much they went down and how they recovered, how they recovering now. And second part is that uh, denim is uh, what. How important is denim for uh, your apparel sector? You know, I mean, uh, how what kind of volume it carries, or what kind of shape it carries? So, uh, Sandeep, I, I don't have the exact numbers because you are the statistics guru. You know the denim numbers better than me in Asia region. But as far as I know, when it comes to denim, the two largest industries manufacturers are the Indochine Orient Group as well as Hyderabadi uh, Group, right? My friend Ravi might be having better idea if you have. So I think at least 15 to 20 percent of their exports of purely different countries, this is expensive garments, right, when it comes to denim. So I think 15 to 20 percent of our domestic exports uh, comes with the denim aspect of it, right. So also in local market also, it's now denim and denim related product has increased up to uh, 20 percent. So the challenge is all this time we have been out of the 660 billion. Half of it, 300 billion has been cheap garments dumped by various other countries. So what we did first, we stopped that. Because with the pandemic, we said, okay, this is not the time to bring in, uh, because there is a lot of uh, unemployment rate, so this is not the time to bring in finished good garments to the industry. So we had a HS code uh, uh, limitation from the customs itself to import garments to Sri Lanka. But we allowed a certain component where special products and high-end brands were allowed to come in. But in June this year, we will be relaxing that. Because we feel we don't, however much that we want to uh, cater the market, people also would like to have some kind of international taste. So we are allowing that to come in. So I think uh, exporters wise, last year we had a lot of challenges. We were supposed to hit 5.5 uh, billion, but we ended up with 4 billion dollars, if I am not mistaken, right? So this year we are very interested, we are in the pathway to 6.5 billion dollars. But uh, recently when we had a meeting, we had challenges again, because uh, a uh, lot of order books are open these days. It's globally this happening because of the Russia, the Europe, the conflict, everything. So that creates a lot of other markets that our exporters are looking into. So I think they are already in discussion with the Indian government also. And a uh, lot of exporters are utilizing the quota also from India. So if the quota can be increased, at, at least the order books can be filled. So these are the developments which are happening at the moment. I don't have the exact numbers, but definitely it's 15 to 20 percent. Okay, that's great. Any other questions? Anybody, somebody wants to ask any question? Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation and the insights uh, we have got. Uh, so I just want to know, like, uh, on the innovation front, what kind of strategy is the government uh, of Sri Lanka is taking, uh, you know, for to take the textile uh, sector forward, specifically for the denim segment because it's one of the segment which has a lot of potential in future. So, could you throw some light on that? Uh, on the denim aspect of it, now mostly uh, with the previous group that I worked, the Hyderabad group. So we are into the we are with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and we are into the total uh, SDGs and as well as the sustainable aspect of it. And also, if you really look at it, uh, uh, we, cre we created the uh, uh, ocean base to a fabric and that development, we positioned it to Sri Lankan cricket team which was that uh, last year World Cup, if I am not mistaken. So likewise, a lot of innovation happened. So the beauty of it is because our fashion uh, industry, we have a university called Moratua, University of Moratua, which has a separate segment for fashion. So there is a lot of R&D going in there. And trust me, we don't have the complete facilities like what you have in India or various parts of the world. But these young children from various uh, regions, they are really keen to learn this. And also now there are a lot of private institutions also come up with. Right? That's a little bit of expensive education, only the affluent can afford. But still, we are pushing the fashion education from the ground end to be more innovative. Now, there, there are concepts like Kalamu Fashion Week which happens. So there are rants about the sustainability there. Then the, you, you can see now we have this aspect of Batik, if you really know. Batik can handle Sri Lanka is a very, very uh, uh, great nation. So now with the Ministry of Textiles, now we have created a separate unit to enhance the Batik aspect of it and reusing it. Because you just, uh, I, I myself uh, did a project five years ago, we did jeans, Batik jeans, right? So that is basically used garments, make it back into Batik and make it an attractive garment, so sell denim Batiks. 
So likewise, we are more trying to push towards the sustainable aspect of it. A lot of innovation happening. But technology-wise, technology exporters have a lot of technology, but it's not available for everyone there. Right? But our, our initiative through our local brands association also, just to get the government with the vocational training authority, with the Ministry of Industries, to create that platform. At least have an incubator for students. So I was very impressed with the institute that you all have for Denim. Right? So these kind of, they can be, definitely can be, they can be replicated there in Sri Lanka. Because Sri Lankans would love to have that kind of an education. So the big difference that we feel is uh, the washers, basically. Uh, because of the cost factor, Right? We don't get the exact right wash then. But in India, you get the washes are uh, much different. And the value additions that you give uh, for the Indian market is huge. But technically, Sri Lanka, we have more decent. Uh, uh, distress is very less. I think uh, if you take uh, uh, certain brands like flying machine and all, which I have observed, so the distress component of it is almost 60%. And you have much innovation going into it. The ribs to the dye to the uh, whatever that you can name it for a jeans, that like uh, my friend Bosco uh, suggested, a lot of implementations that they are doing. So this is not 100% captured there in the fashion aspect of it. But still now the youngsters are moving towards it. And when, when your Indian boys and girls start traveling to Sri Lanka, they will get inspired and then we will also get more business from the distress side. Right? So that's what I feel. Thank you so much. That helps. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. Just wanted to ask uh, something. Say, for example, uh, I remember I was uh, in Sri Lanka for uh, uh, many, many years, and uh, have seen that uh, whenever uh, the dollar had actually uh, gone strong, the export segment actually had grown because uh, it's like I'm having a five dollar garment. I mean, it's still the same five dollars, but probably uh, in so back to back. Yeah. yeah so. Uh, in that way, so uh, when of course at this time the crisis was uh, at a scale that was unimaginable before, but uh, haven't that uh, helped the export segment expanding? Because uh, uh, I believe uh, the kind of returns they had, like say for example, uh, dollar had reached a state where it was giving a massive Sri Lankan currency in return. So all those companies had actually made a better uh, profit to pay the laborers and, you know, and I think uh, make better revenue. So, did it actually uh, help the export? Good question. So, honestly, yes. But in fact, you see, you are so grateful to the exporters. At certain crisis time, they did convert their dollars to, to purchase poor. So, that was, that, that was a commitment from Joint Apparel Association Forum. At some point, the government was completely depending on the textile exporters. Because now it has become, in, in our total uh, foreign revenue, you know, it has become closer to 42 to 46 percent is apparel, right? So, tea has gone down, right? But we are still called the first best salon tea and the best cinnamon in the world. But still, uh, I think apparel had taken over. Uh, and also, a lot of, uh, most of the top uh, apparel exporters in Sri Lanka, with all these difficulties, none of the factories were closed. We were in the verge, but they never gave up. As entrepreneurs, they start pushing. And also, with the government's policies now, they don't want the exporters to lose them. So we wanted to actually get it back on track. And with the benefits that uh, the, uh, the dollar, with the stability is happening at the moment, even though at some point, dollar came down drastically because of the new fiscal policy that we had. Otherwise, dollar was earlier, uh, two years ago, it was 203 rupees, right? Now I think at that time India was 70 rupees. Now India is at 81 rupees if I'm not mistaken. So no, we went up to 389 rupees, which was a big hit for the local apparel brands. Because since that we don't have the uh, resources, we don't have the fabric, we don't have the drinks. So in order to purchase, the, the cost went high with the inflation and the prices went high. Of course, we have to push it back to the consumer anyway, because they are the ones who are going to pay the increased prices. But now, little by little, it's coming down. It, from the exporters end also, there is a lot of contribution, giving back to the society. They are, they are also pumping in a lot of money, converting dollars, trying to increase numbers more. Because we have now realized how important dollars is. Right? Not all the countries would like to have Austro accounts in Sri Lanka. India was one ex exception for us, and we are really grateful to that. So, but, but saying that, early it was 40-60, India-China purchasing. Now India has come to 55% of fabrics for Sri Lanka. Right? Yeah? So India had overtaken China there also. Like population, you are overtaken that also. Right? So, uh, so I think 
these are good positives and our own exporters, Sri Lankan own homegrown brands as entrepreneurs are now back on track. Of course, there are a lot of challenges because of the order books these days, but yet again, that is well, that always happens, you know, right? Uh, at least twice, uh, twice in a year, you always have uh, that kind of a capacity issue. But we had a major issue in September, but now it's back on track. And I believe with uh, closely working with, because Joint Apparel Association Forum is a strong force with the government of Sri Lanka because they, they can call the shots, so because they have structured it in that way, so the government also listens to them. So because of the contribution that they gave during the disaster time, and now the government is also working on various other aspects to bring in more volume and uh, revenue to the industries. I think uh, that's where we are stand, and we stand, and I'm, I'm sure the industry, especially the big brands in Sri Lanka who are big time exporters, will start pushing even more. That's what I feel. All right. Thank you. Hello. Uh, you can't answer the question. Uh, what I really want to understand was with the effect of uh, inflation of 50 to 70 percent, what was the impact on MRP? Because for consumer, that's the most important thing. How was the effect on the industry? Closer to 40 to 45 percent MRP increase, right? It was unavoidable. Because you see, if we had the resources of fabric to everything in house, we could have still managed. I mean, it was 40, 40 percent increase. 40 to 50, yes. Right? But Sec A and Sec B didn't uh, feel it much, but the real middle class of Sec C had the real punch. Actually, our brands, our volume wise, uh, our uh, what do you call uh, value sales were okay, but quantity sales were dropped. So because of that, we had uh, capacity issues because most of the brands, the beauty beauty of it is we don't run large factories, so we have subcontracted business model. So it's easy for us to outsource certain component of it, certain drops will be outsourced to another entrepreneur uh, or a factory. So that model works for us. So, but still, later like I said, it was the consumer who felt the punch, really. But now, we are in the process of reducing, right, a little by little, because we have three seasons. In Sri Lanka, the real business is three seasons. Now, for you guys, now like yesterday, uh, uh, Nidhi said, now we don't have uh, four seasons, but you act as if you are four seasons because you are more, uh, what do you call, uh, US-oriented economy or whatever. But in Sri Lanka, we have three seasons. Now, like Diwali for you, we have Aurudu, Singhala Tamil Aurudu is a bigger season for us. That, is, that happens in April. Then Ramadan is another season as well as Christmas is another season. So we have 70% uh, uh, Buddhist and 15% uh, Tamil is another 20%, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, no, so 11% Muslim population likewise. So we came to all these religious uh, beliefs and because of that we have three main seasons. Six months is always off season for us. But what retailers and brands do is we do go on different drops and different creativities and new new uh, tech, uh, what do you call new designs. Likewise, we have a uh, our production to the retail concept has a, a, a different uh, relationship. So we don't know. Diwali is big for you guys because when it comes to Diwali time, I think the productions always you will have production capacity issues. You will try to also solve that because it's huge season. After that, it's normal for you guys. But for us, we manage it because the seasons pause here and there. Now, this year was challenging because Ramadan happened just after 10 days of Aurudu. Because Aurudu is always April 14th or 13th or 14th. So, Ramadan happens. Next year, it's going to be even more challenging. Both seasons are going to come together because always the Ramadan calendar, 10 days, 15 days prior, right? So, because of that. But still, uh, we work on uh, three main seasons there in Sri Lanka so, and we really capitalize on that. Thank you. Thank you, Sudan, for being nice. Sir. Can understand more about our Sri Lankan economy more insights on them. And this, my question is, uh, before Corona uh, and Rajabaksha's period and all, was there any more import from China and apparel? Uh, okay. Rather getting into controversy or names, I will just be like this, right? Okay. China had a bigger impact, yes, right? But uh, uh, even, uh, even uh, uh, from India, there were a lot of finished food garments coming into Sri Lanka, right? Mostly the traditional aspect of it. Uh, even from Tamil Nadu, you will say the saris uh, to the traditional vetis to the chudidar to salwar to leggings. That business was always there with India, so India dominated. But when it comes to denim, denim, China had better impact than you guys because they were price conscious basically. The price wise, they were much cheaper, right? So we as brand owners, we don't more, purchase more people. influence on the government also, no? That time and that. <laughs> You're putting me on a fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. It's like this. Technically, being honest, I think now 
India had taken the control little by little. Actually, India was a bit relaxing. At that time, China had capitalized. That's what I could feel. Right? But after Easter attacks, because Indian, Indian intelligence was the first to update us about the Easter attacks. Like, there's going to be an attack. We didn't react. We were sleeping. Right? So then, after that, the trade relations, even after the COVID, COVID time, technology, support, uh, mass to, because you had better, uh, even more disaster in India because of numbers, right? But still, we started building that relationship. I think the current government, with your setup here, as well as the finance ministry, working closely with Sri Lankan banks and finance ministry, I think now India has taken a lot more control. I don't, I don't know whether China likes it or not, but end of the day, I now overall in Sri Lanka, if you really look at it, India has a bigger impact because if you really look at investments also, more investments are coming from Indian side of it rather than because China, we owe China a lot of money, so because of that, their investments are not. Uh, regularized at the moment, but of course saying that Port City to various other implementations are going on. India pumped in a lot of money to the northern province just after the post war. Uh, post war. India, Indian railway supported the government railway to Jatna. And you know now we have started a ferry service from uh, uh, Tutukuri to Kangasan today. Right? So, so that's another implementation. Now we were discussing on our way from Sri Lanka. Even we are okay. We put a highway, 32 kilometer highway, connect us by a road. Indians can come and have a uh, luxury in Sri Lanka to business there. We don't mind. That's how it is now. This is just my personal opinion, right? Because we have a so close country, cultures are so similar, right? And uh, Shah Rukh Khan is so popular in our country. So, you know, uh, uh, most of the people can speak Hindi also now. So, I don't think there is a big difference. And hospitality wise, our people are very warm. So, you will really, get the proper hospitable uh, tourism also in Sri Lanka. I think. Now, India is capitalizing. Even, uh, like I told you, in Chennai and Kochi, there is a trade show which is happening. Yesterday, from yesterday, day before, there is a trade show for tourism which is happening. So, and in Indian tour, tra travelers mostly come for casinos also there. It's become normal, your country become normal, I believe. Yeah. Country, no. For sooner than that we expected. Honestly, as entrepreneurs, as industrialists, we also didn't expect this turnaround. But it's happening. And we have warmly welcoming that and we want to now we don't want to relax we want to push for next five years and make our country into a stable state and also we feel as brands our vision is we feel it's much easier for us to work closely with india with the numbers now even though 1.4 billion population so many brands you have even for denims or whatever still there is enough room for other brands to come in and play in the indian market so there's always opportunity in india so we, we believe with the relationship we, you and me, on a denim basis or a textile basis, we can always have a relationship. But the trade relationships are not good. The governments to governments, they have cold war. You will never be able to sustain, right? So I think now it's in the right platform, and we are looking forward to a great relationship with India. Thanks, thanks.